you guys. Welcome back to Rave Culture Podcast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I am your host, Emma Capotis. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're all having an awesome week so far. Um, I'm actually recording this today on Sunday, so happy Father's Day to all of my dads out there. I hope you all had a great weekend um, and you got to spend some time with loved ones. I am sitting here. It's pretty late in the night. Um, I'm a little bit in a coma from the ice cream sundae that I just had. I ate a lot today. I got to spend time this morning with my family and my dad, uh, my brother and my boyfriend Brian, and then we went and spent the afternoon and the evening with his family, got some nice Mexican food, hung out, and then we went and treated ourselves to some ice cream. So I am absolutely stuffed at this point kind of half asleep because I'm a little bit in a food coma but I was like you know what I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna record this episode anyway but I hope you all enjoyed your weekend and you had a great day I hope your week is off to a good start I know we're already halfway through so that's the amazing thing at this point but I just wanted to kick off the episode with saying all of my thank yous as per usual you guys thank you so much for checking out the podcast we are on episode 10 already which is fucking crazy I can't believe we're here already I'm absolutely loving doing this podcast um it's really fun to have a little bit of a separation between this and my YouTube channel if you guys are just joining or you're unfamiliar I also have a YouTube channel under my name um that is EDM related as well and I actually just got back from Ever After Music Festival in Kitchener Ontario and I have all my vlogs there I got so much footage each one is 25 minutes long so that just tells you right there but yeah if you guys are interested at all and you want to go see show vlogs or raver content I'm posting some stuff this week about electric zoo because that is coming up and that's the next major festival I'm attending so yeah plugging the YouTube channel there definitely go over and check that out you guys can also follow me at Emma Capotis and at Rave Culture Cast just to stay in the loop with everything that's going on. I'm super active on social media, on Instagram and Twitter. I love chatting with you guys as much as possible. Seriously, if you ever send me a comment or a DM, I try and get to every single one that I possibly can. Um, any questions you guys have, festival related or not, I'm always available if you guys want to chat. Um, and if I don't get to you, don't hate me. I promise I'm trying to get through as many as I can. But yeah, it's, I love talking to you guys. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me on YouTube, Twitter, um, or you guys can email the podcast at raveculturecast at gmail.com. You guys can submit any episode ideas you have or just in general, any topics you want me to cover on future episodes. I have a whole list of submissions for, from you guys and I've gotten some really great ones. So I'm definitely going to be getting to them pretty soon so again raveculturecast at gmail.com raveculturecast at gmail.com if you want to submit any ideas or just send me longer notes I've been communicating with people who have sent me some pretty incredible stories over there so yeah feel free to email me there and as always thank you guys so much for sharing this podcast with your friends for putting it on Twitter for putting it on Instagram you know as always tag us and screenshot when you guys are listening I'll reshare it on Insta stories and Twitter wherever I can so yeah it lets me know you guys are listening I absolutely love seeing that you're enjoying it so far on your commutes or when you're sitting and hanging at home Um, yeah thank you so much also for rating and reviewing on iTunes Um, I appreciate it more than you guys know I love reading your comments But that's all I've got for you here. So I'm just going to jump into the first portion of the podcast, which is the EDM news. So actually last week I had a really big roundup of news because it had been a few weeks since I did an update. So definitely head back to last week's episode if you haven't listened to it already. I had a ton of stuff going on. Um, But for this week, I've got a couple things to talk about. So the first major thing was that Tomorrowland finally dropped their entire lineup for this year. It's coming up really soon, which is crazy. So it begins Friday, July 19th, and the whole thing ends Sunday, July 28th. So it takes place over two weekends. It takes place in Boom, Belgium. Um, And yeah, it's kind of like the mecca of all EDM festivals. I mean, EDC Las Vegas was um, named the biggest one this year as far as the amount of people that are attending it. But Tomorrowland is massive I'm pretty sure it's 16 or 17 stages I personally watch the live sets every single year they have a really really great channel where you can basically watch all the live sets they post all of them on YouTube later it gives me endless amounts of sets to listen to which is really great but if you guys don't get to go you can watch them happening live so I will definitely be on my computer doing that I hope to one day attend it in person it's definitely like on the top of my list but it's a big 
trip coming from New Jersey. It's definitely not an easy uh, thing to get to. So that's sort of like something I will budget for and hopefully be able to do in the future. But if you guys are going, definitely let me know. DM me or tweet me. I'm really curious to see who's going um, and who you're excited to see. So I'm actually going to go down the lineup here um, and tell you guys the most notable ones to me, the ones I was the most excited about. So first and foremost, Eric Prids presents Hollowsphere. Catch me at that. That is fucking awesome. Um, and that stage has Camel Fat, Kristoff, Eric Prids, Ida Engberg, Neon, Surfing Leons, Tiga, and Yato. Um, that is going to be incredible. I can't wait to see like what visuals he brings. I mean, Eric Prids is like one of my favorite artists. So that really, really stood out to me. Um, the Monster Cat stage, which is at the Rose Garden. The biggest names that st- stood out to me here, Nightmare and Slander are bringing good vibrations. Seven Lions back-to-back kill the noise. Hell yeah, that is awesome. They have a couple songs together, so seeing them back-to-back would be so unique. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a Seven Lions back-to-back set. Now that I think about it. He's brought guests out, but I've never seen a back-to-back. Uh, they have Slushy there, and they have Zed's Dead. So that is going to be a big one. The Sexy by Nature stage, um, which is hosted by Sunnery James and Ryan Marciano, has The Magician, Sam Felt, Lucas and Steve, Bruno Martini, Benny Benassi. So that is a really fun house stage. Which other one stood out to me? Oh my God, an Anjuna Beat stage at Euphoria. Whew. I think, I don't know. I don't know if you'd be able to pull me away from the stage. Above and Beyond, Andrew Bayer, Gabriel and Dresden, Grum, Elon Bluestone, Oliver Smith, Seven Lions, Spencer Brown, just to name a few. Wow. Oh my God. I would definitely, I mean, I would be at every single Seven Lions set. Fuse and Dave Clark present. You have Chris Liebig, Pan Pot. So you got some techno artists there. That is going to be awesome. And then, of course, main stage, I mean, you've got Amelie Lenz, Black Coffee, Carl Cox, DJ Diesel, Don Diablo, oh my god, Oliver Heldens, bitch, Steve Aoki, Chainsmokers, Tiesto, oh my god, Don Diablo and Oliver Heldens, though, and Amelie Lenz, that is so dope. And then you have the Stamped Record stage, which is Martin Garrix's record label. You have BB Rexa, which is pretty cool, Dub Vision, Back to Back Raiden, Lewis the Child, Martin Garrix, Salvatore Ganacci. That's dope. So yeah, I mean, this festival is always stacked no matter what. I mean, the tickets always sell out because just the festival itself is iconic and there's so many stages. And if you are into EDM, this is like on the dream list for a lot of people, but you're basically going to see everyone. That lineup's incredible. So that is really exciting. I hope all of you who are going are like getting prepared and starting to get really, really excited. The only other news I have is Coachella pre-sale tickets I saw went up for sale last week and then Nocturnal Wonderland tickets are on sale. I talked a little bit about that last week. This is the last year that they're going to have it in that location um, because they put a noise ordinance in place. So the festival has to end at midnight. People were a little on the fence about that. It is a camping festival, but I promise you it's still going to be incredible. I'm not going to be attending this year. I'm going to Imagine Music Festival, which is the weekend after Nocturnal. So there's no way I'd be able to do both of them and your girl's on a tight budget and is out of vacation days from work. So (laughs) I can only do so many things, but I hope you guys have an awesome time and go check out tickets while you can. All right, you guys, that's all I've got. Now we're going to get into the episode. So I actually posted this one on social media because I am going to be including your input today. I got a couple of responses from you guys on Instagram stories, but just to give you guys some background how this episode came to be. So I have been attending music festivals for 13 years. It hasn't always been EDM festivals. I'm going to give you guys a quick history lesson and some background on myself, but it's been a very long time. So I can easily say that I have had experience attending festivals through my literal like adolescent teenage years into my 20s, into my later 20s. I'm 28 now. So I've been through that transition. I've grown through music festivals my musical tastes have changed I'm into different genres and artists and I know a lot more about EDM than I knew a couple years ago and this episode came about because I attended Governor's Ball about two weekends ago it was the first weekend of June Governor's Ball is an all-ages event I have attended it in the past Um, I I attend all different types of festivals right so some of them are all ages some of them are 18 plus some of them are 21 plus this was an all-ages event and I don't know what was in the air but it was just very 
very apparent that a majority of the people there were young teenagers. And there was some video that surfaced on Sunday of the festival. They had to evacuate the festival because there was really, really bad weather in the neighborhood. And there's like nothing they can do about that. It was lightning and thundering. So they had to evacuate the whole place. And video surfaced online and on Twitter showing these young kids basically like rioting and acting like complete assholes on their way out and they were ripping apart art installations and just acting like fucking idiots and it just like really got me heated I was like who like this is so disrespectful if you guys know me and you know this channel I'm all about the plural life and not just in a cheesy way but like literally be respectful to yourself and others that's like such a huge thing and even the festival like those they paid money to do that yeah, I don't know so anyway so I'm ooh, I'm already getting fired up you guys but I just wanted to say I love how this podcast has become more of like a ranty type place versus like my YouTube channel where I the videos are a little bit more edited and I, you know all of my stuff likes to have a positive spin around it and I like to be a positive space but here on this podcast between you and me you listening right now and me We're going to reserve the right to talk some shit on the podcast. Um, So I hope you guys are on board for that. It's all in good fun. Um, But I just want to give my honest opinion on here and yeah, and open the dialogue about different things in the EDM community. So that's how we got to today's podcast. I wanted to discuss the topic of all ages events and 16 plus events. I'm sort of going to lump those in together um, and we'll just talk a little bit about both. But after seeing those videos and just experiencing an all ages event I was like you know what we're going to talk about this in an episode so today we're going to be breaking down all age events the good the bad and the ugly all right this is where I put my little disclaimer in the beginning here I want to preface this by saying I am in absolutely no way against certain age groups you guys know this I'm a love all serve all kind of girl um like I said I started attending live shows I mean if we want to talk concerts my first concert was Backstreet Boys and I was literally 10 years old and then after that it was NSYNC Ryan Cabrera yeah I just like I loved attending live events from a very young age so I'm gonna give you guys my history with festivals in a second here but the point of me saying this is that this is just my opinion right you're here to hear my opinion and I'm sharing your opinions as well I definitely want to include you guys in the podcast but the whole point here is to just have an open conversation an open dialogue about things going on in our community here so nobody take offense to this if you're listening and you're 16 or 17 it's no offense to you guys I know everyone is an individual we're not lumping you all together but just wanted to say that you know we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit of stuff today all right so Briefly, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about my history attending festivals because I I don't think that I've ever told this story on my YouTube channel or on here yet. Um, So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of my background in live music events. So I have actually been attending festivals for 13 years. It did not start out as EDM events, though. I was super, super into pop punk, alternative, rock, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. But at the time when I was in high school, which which was from 2005 to 2009, that was like the MySpace era where like pop punk bands, emo music, like shit was exploding. That was the most popular thing at the time. Um, That just like that whole look was like very in. Everyone was kind of like emo and goth, whatever. So bands and shows like that were super, super popular. So I was really into that starting in middle school. And I remember I was in eighth grade and my friends and I wanted to see Story of the Year. I'm pretty sure that's the artist. And my mom would not let me go because I was 13 years old. (laughs) She said she wouldn't let me go to a rock show. And I was so upset because my one friend... She said her mom would let her go, but yeah. So I was told no, that I couldn't go to the show, and I was super disappointed. However, the next year when I was in ninth grade, I was finally in high school, so I was about, I think I was 15 at the time, because it might have been like 2005, 2006, but either way, I was either 14 or 15. There was a music festival that was in New Jersey, um, and it was literally 20 minutes from my house. It was called Bamboozle. If any of you guys listening remember bamboozle or ever attended bamboozle please 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 hit me up after this I want to know which ones you attended because yeah your girl's feeling a little old right now but it was the fucking best so bamboozle basically was this 
festival that took place in New Jersey. It was originally like in the Asbury Park area and then they lost that location and then they were at MetLife. Yeah, they were at MetLife um, where the Giant Stadium is. So pretty much it was a rock alternative music festival. That's how it started. So if you guys are familiar with like Warp Tour, that kind of vibe, that's what this was. It was one weekend, usually the last weekend in May. So it was like right kicking off like summer Memorial Day weekend is usually when it would happen. And they had a range of stages and artists, but all in the genre of like rock pop punk that changed throughout the years. I will say that towards the end of the festival, they added in like rap artists, pop artists. It got weird. I think they sort of lost their like way a bit because that type of music was sort of not selling as many tickets. So then they started introducing other people. But that's beside the point. So. My first one that I ever attended was in 2006. I was so excited. I still have pictures like somewhere of my outfit, but oh my God, I was a literal child. I'm pretty sure I was 14 years old and I got to go because me and my friends again were super into this type of music and my one friend Lizzie, her mom is the coolest woman ever. She loves shows and like rock music too and live events. So she chaperoned us, which I'm so grateful that she did that because we all wanted to go so bad to go see our favorite artists. You guys, I found the lineup here. I'm going to read it so you get an idea. So it was at the Meadowlands Sports Complex, which is now called the MetLife Stadium. Ooh, and it was headlined by Fall Out Boy and Taking Back Sunday. Oh, God, that gives me so many feels. Okay, so one of the stages was Halifax, The Spill Canvas, Silverstein. Ooh, from first to last. I'm pretty sure mm, was Sunny in it, who is now known as Skrillex. Sunny might have been in it back then. Hawthorne Heights, All American Rejects, Fall Out Boy. Then we also had Bayside, Hello Goodbye, Reliant K, Motion City Soundtrack. Oh, I love them. Thursday. You also had the AKAs, Paramore, bitch. If you guys don't know me, my two like diehard favorite bands growing up were Paramore and All Time Low. I will have a special place in my heart for them always. Like I was the girl in high school who had Converse and I wrote All Time Low and Paramore lyrics all over everything and I cut my hair exactly like Haley from Paramore had it and I had all their clothes and everything. Like I was literally obsessed with them. Anyway, so The Rocket Summer... Who else do we have here? Hit the lights. Oh my God. This is crazy. The jumps, the red jumpsuit apparatus. Alexis on fire. 30 seconds to Mars. Oh my God. I was obsessed with Jared Leto. Panic at the disco. Senses fail. Him. AFI. Aiden. Say anything. Under oath. Saves the day. Taking back Sunday. You get the gist, right? So Circa Survive. Oh God. This gives me so many feels. I still love all this shit. Just so you know. Like I might love EDM, but I will always have a special place in my heart for this type of music just because it's all I listened to and all the shows that I went to and the festivals I was obsessed so yeah uh my friend's mom chaperoned us she would always stand like 15 behind 15 feet behind us and let us do our thing but she's super tall I think she's like six foot or six foot one she's very tall woman and yeah she was like our bodyguard and made sure that we were okay I remember I like dyed a little piece of my hair blue and I thought that I was so fucking cool but honestly I was already obsessed with live events, but I think that was the tipping point. Like I became obsessed with attending shows and festivals. The fact that I could go somewhere for three days straight and just have the time of my life and bounce around to different stages and listen to my favorite music and see my favorite people up on stage. And there's all other things going on. There's all these vendors and clothing companies and things you can do to entertain yourself But it just was so much packed into one weekend and it was the start of summer. So you guys know like the feeling you get just being at a festival. That's what I got at that young age and I was literally hooked. So all of this is to say I was very lucky that this event was all ages, right? Because I was 14 years old. Oh, and I forgot to mention I attended Bamboozle. I think it was eight or nine years in a row. So it doesn't exist anymore. It only was a festival for about 12 years I think 12 years, but I attended a majority of the years every single year. And I feel you guys right now who want to buy EDC Las Vegas tickets and you're like, oh, it's happening during commencement weekend and I'm graduating that weekend. I completely feel you because I was going to bamboozle during finals weeks when I was in college and my parents were getting so pissed at me. They were like, you should be studying. 
you can't take off those three days. Bitch, I left. Are you kidding me? I was like, bye, everybody. Have fun studying. I'm going to the festival. I did that three years in a row throughout college. So I completely feel you. I chose my priorities there. And guess what? I graduated and I did just damn fine. Commencement's different. I don't think I would have missed my graduation ceremony. That's a thing for like you and your family. And that will literally never happen again. So I would not have missed my graduation ceremony. But just missing three days of studying for finals. Yeah, I did that. So anyway, as I was saying, I was lucky that that festival was an all ages festival because it got me obsessed at such a young age and I was able to attend it through my early 20s and into college. And yeah, I just had the best time of my life. I do remember though, at one point we were in the crowd, like in the mosh pit area, like people were shoving and pushing and we must have been like what, 16 or 17 years old. And I specifically remember this one woman and her boyfriend were like extremely intoxicated and they had their beer in their hand and they were spilling it everywhere and they were bumping into people and they kept getting it all over us. And I literally remember saying to my friend Lizzie, like, God, these people are so drunk and obnoxious and like, they're so old. Why are they, they, why are they here? They're too old to be here. Looking back on it, those guys were probably in their 20s. I just was such an infant that I thought that they were too old to be there. And you flip it now and I'm like, God, these kids are kids. They're too young to be here. Do you know what I mean? So looking back on it, I just probably wasn't at the right age yet or a maturity level to like fully understand what was happening. But it doesn't matter. Like I grew up going to those events and I'm so grateful that I could. I also want to just shout out Warp Tour. Again, very similar situation. I attended about five or six Warp Tours in a row. And to me, it was just like a staple in my summer. Like I could see, again, so many of my favorite artists. And I just remember being in these parking lots, like baking in the heat because you're wearing all black. And I was getting terrible sunburns. But I got to go meet like some of my favorite bands and artists. And I loved every single fucking minute of it. It was just like... All my memories from all the summers were those festivals that I attended. Anyway, we're done going down memory lane. Thank you guys for sticking with me. But hopefully now you know a little bit more about me and my background and like what else I'm into because it wasn't always EDM. I got into EDM in college. I attended my first show my junior year of college. So yeah, that's my little history. But I did really want to quickly mention a couple festivals that are all ages are 16 plus. There are so many. These are just a couple that I like thought of off the top of my head. So Coachella, Governor's Ball, Ever After, Life in Color, Lollapalooza, Outside Lands, Austin City Limits, Lightning in a Bottle, I'm pretty sure. So those are just a few of them. Um, A lot of the ones that are during the day and are mixed genre festivals, those are typically all ages. Um, A lot of Insomniac events are 18 plus because they take place pretty much like in the nighttime until like the early hours in the morning. So majority of those I would say are typically 18 plus festivals. And I have a lot of feelings about mixed genre festivals, but I think that's like something I could go off on in an entire episode. So let me know if you guys are interested in me talking about the pros and cons of mixed genre festivals, because I think that would be a really interesting topic to cover. But Now we're going to get into it. Okay, so this is like the meat of the episode right now. So I'm going to talk about my pros and cons of all ages events. But first, I'm going to take a quick break here, you guys. Just a reminder what festivals I'm attending this summer. So I'm going to be at Electric Zoo and Imagine Music Festival in Atlanta, Georgia in August and September. If you guys are coming, please let me know. I'm going to be doing meetups, um, probably multiple meetups and meetups with other youtubers and content creators at these events so definitely stay tuned follow me at emma capotis i'll be updating you regularly with plans and things like that and again you guys can follow my youtube channel i'm doing tons of videos on both of these festivals so if you guys need any information tips advice definitely go check me out on youtube i'm gonna have stuff covering both festivals Yo, I'm like low-key getting out of breath and lightheaded recording this podcast right now. I'm not kidding you guys. I talk a lot. Hey, what's up? If you didn't know this about me already, now you know. (laughs) It's really hot in New Jersey right now. It's in like the 80s and I don't have the air conditioning on in here because then you guys would hear the buzzing of it in the background. So your girl's dying here just so you know. Anyway, we're going to get back into this. So, so pros. Um, 
like I just talked about my story, I think some kids and younger people really just are super into music. It's their biggest interest and their biggest hobby. And they have every right to attend festivals as we do. So I think that it's a really cool thing if you're interested young and you want to attend these events. I think it's awesome that you get to be exposed to it so early. Because like for me, it was my passion and I'm so, so happy I have all of those memories to look back on. It was the best. It definitely like shaped me as a person and it just gave me something to be really involved in. So some festivals that are 16 plus or all ages require a parent or a guardian or whatever to accompany you. So I think that's pretty great too. Like in my case when I was 14 or say your middle schooler is going to some of this thing. I think it is safer to have a parent or a guardian or an older sister, brother, whatever it is with you just to keep an eye out, keep you safe, Um, especially like going to and leaving a festival that that's kind of like the area where you got to be careful just with taking public transportation or being picked up you know like there are some sketchy people at these events and they might see 13 year old girls walking out of a festival and you know you just got to be safe so I I do think it is good um, if you do have a guardian with you then why not go do it and go have fun and they can let you do your thing parents can also take their kids it is the cutest fucking thing ever Ever when you see like a dad with his four-year-old on his shoulders and he's got little headphones on to protect his ears and they're like bopping along like I remember seeing that at Bamboozle and at Warped Tour parents with their young kids and I love that so I think that's so cool to see like a family experience people jamming out with their children um, and a lot of these festival festivals will cater to that because they have things like carnival games carnival rides a lot of them just have like entertaining things you can interact with and hang out and food and all that fun stuff so it is catered to families and they do have like a lot of entertainment um, at these festivals and especially again like if it's a mixed genre festival or a themed festival they definitely have like things going on to entertain yourself so it's it's very similar to going to like a carnival for example so it is interesting to see families bringing their younger kids and if it takes place during the day which again a lot of the all ages festivals take place during the day then why not like have parents go for a couple hours and then leave when it's their bedtime and again I want to take my kids to shows like for sure like I want to have kids in a couple years and I'm that is literally not going to stop me that's something I think about frequently I'm like oh my god what will happen to my channel and this podcast when I have kids Literally nothing because I want to involve them and I want to take them to shows and expose them to music at a young age. So I would be super bummed if I couldn't take them to certain events or live shows. So yeah, I think that there's stuff for them to enjoy and do. And as long as they're wearing ear protection and, and being okay, then why not just take them and hang out and yeah, have a good family experience for everybody. So now my cons. This These are the things and it was hard to come up with a list because again, I love music festivals so much and to me they're such a positive place and they've given so much to my life so I hate to like say some of these things because it might give some like negative connotations associated with festivals but regardless I think the biggest con is that it's a liability right like there are so many more underage kids drinking and doing drugs and getting in trouble and there's just gonna be way more issues with that especially in the New York City area which is a majority of the festivals I attend are over here if you're gonna have 16 plus events of course these kids are drinking on the train or pre-gaming really really hard before they get into the festival and then you just have an issue with people being really rowdy being really obnoxious and on top of that a dangerous situation um, and that's on the festival to make sure that these kids are safe so it is a liability um, and it's an immaturity issue and again I don't want to lump everybody together because I'm not saying all 16 year olds all 15 year olds all 18 year olds are immature obviously you're all individuals but in general as you get older you realize you're immature, right? So there are some things that are going to go on. You're going to be rowdier in the crowd. Um, I have personally experienced rudeness, shoving. I've seen people at GovBall actually. Um, this couple was like making out in the crowd and these teenagers next to me were like so surprised that people would be making out in a crowd and they were videotaping them and making fun of them. And I was thinking they're like, what the fuck are we videotaping them for? Like, again, everybody's on their phones now and in everybody's business. Like, just leave them alone. Everybody's here having a good time. I don't really know why you need to, like, make fun of them. But it's just an immaturity issue and, like, they're not used to seeing that. 
all the time versus when you're older you've seen fucking everything at this point I've seen it all at these music festivals but rioting and destroying things and probably having way less respect I think that comes with the younger ages littering I cannot even tell you how many kids were littering at governor's ball I literally walked past this girl and made direct eye contact with her and she threw her trash on the ground and I picked it up and I threw it in the garbage after she walked away so Overall, I feel like there's some like disrespect that comes with some of the younger kids and it is not everybody. I'll say that again, but I do think that there is an extreme level of immaturity with younger kids and that's more heavily seen obviously at all ages and 16 plus events than it is at 18 plus. You know, some people might say it's also not the right environment for younger kids to be in and that like I'm on the fence about because to me, these festivals are so much fun and I think they're a really positive place and you can meet so many incredible people and see your favorite artists and again like I was at Bamboozle when I was 15 16 17 years old and yeah there was shit going on around me that like might have appalled me at the time or I it's not something I saw every day and maybe I got exposed to some things a little young but it didn't affect me in any way and I was completely fine so I don't know some people might say it's not a good situation for like teens to be around people when they're using drugs and heavily drinking and things like that, but to each their own. And the last thing I'll say, which I mentioned before with having a guardian is a really good thing. You know, it can be a dangerous situation. I feel like the kids in New York are pretty savvy. Like they take subways and things like that at a very young age, but you also have kids coming from New Jersey and suburban areas and everywhere else in the United States or in the world. Like if you're a really, really young girl or a young guy you do have to be careful going in and out of festivals there are fucking creepers out there and yo these 16 year old girls look way fucking older than they used to I was with these girls at ever after last weekend that were 16 we ended up walking them into the festival because they met us on the shuttle bus and they were like hey can you guys walk us in and I was like sure whatever they're like full makeup was done they had eyelashes on like they looked amazing but I was like god damn these girls are 16 you know not maybe not the best situation if there's a creepy pedophile kind of older dude at a music festival and I don't want to take it there but yeah you can have younger people being taken advantage of especially if they're under the influence um I had an episode on here about how prevalent sexual harassment is at these shows it happens to men and women of all fucking ages now you're going to add into the situation literal teenagers yeah maybe not the right place for them to be if there's so much sexual harassment happening at music festivals so it's just things like that that float around your head and that you know again can be a liability or a little concerning you just have to be very mindful of the situations that you're putting yourself and these other people in okay my rant is over those are all of my thoughts I am now going to read the responses that you guys sent in so I asked you guys how do you feel about all ages events And I got some interesting feedback. I'm not surprised by the feedback, but here we go. Okay, I'll just read it out loud. Um, So I got one person said, I think they're okay when the event is earlier in the day, but not at a show that's going till 4 a.m. Oh, that was from LBES11. Maxine underscore Fonseca said, I could only imagine how I would have acted, LOL. So it's a no from me. Fair. I feel like we can all kind of relate to that like you look at back at your younger years and you're like oh that would have been cringeworthy um Vicky Viola 06 said not a fan too much temptation for people who aren't mature enough think that's a really really great point as well younger kids could definitely be f- for sure easily influenced into things that they may not have normally done god I'm gonna butcher these Instagram names I think this is Slizbala Slizabala uh I don't look for that but if I happen to find out it's a discouragement from going So I guess they said like they're not really checking on a festival's website if it is an all ages event. But if they find out that it is, uh, they might like think twice about attending the festival. All right. Williams dot Jehovani said, I feel like all age shows are the ones where you see bottles or cups thrown at people and artists, which could be a fair point. That definitely has happened at some shows. (laughs) Um, Dorifus 09 said, please make it stop. Yeah, I think there are some people who feel like very, very strongly about this topic. So I, I see where you're coming. Um, and someone else said, also, once I get there and notice the age difference, I feel out of place. I'm 27. 
I see what you're saying. Again, like on the spectrum of EDM shows, people attend of like all ages. Like I definitely don't think EDM festivals are that young. I think a lot of people 30 plus, 40 plus attend them. But yeah, when I was at Governor's Ball and I saw a bunch of teenagers, I was like, holy shit. I thought I looked young. People tell me I look young all the time. And they I literally are surprised when I say 28 because I look like I'm 20 or 21. But when you see teenagers, you're like, nope, no, that looks about right. All right, CSI Sun 25 said, not a fan. High schoolers come to Lollapalooza drunk, high, and hella obnoxious. So there's an example of one festival that's definitely all ages. I haven't attended Lala yet, but I would love to in the future. Um, usually in Pink said, it's weird seeing high school age people at a festival. Definitely a fan of 18 plus. It's a more respectable crowd audience vibe. Um, M Schneider 005 said immaturity. So assuming just the immaturity of the crowd and age range is an issue for them. Um, Olivia Rahujo underscore said absolutely not. 16 year olds are children and are going to shows with 21 plus year olds is dangerous. So that's definitely one point of view for sure. You got to just be careful there. Like I mentioned, safety issues. Um, Silver Bullet said all ages is lame slash why and 16 plus is dangerous, especially if the crowd is primarily older and alcohol is involved. So, yeah, I think a lot of people are just concerned more of the immaturity level and of not being drinking age, just like the environment may not be the best for these kids. Um, Amanda, please said if you can't pay for something without asking mom or dad, then you shouldn't be able to go. I totally see where you're coming from. But again, all the bamboozles and shows I went to in high school, my parents were paying for like I was asking for them for Christmas. And that's like literally the only thing I would ask for. So I'm on the fence about that because I wouldn't have been able to attend any of those shows without my parents buying them for me for birthday or Christmas gifts. Tara Freeze. What's up, Tara? She goes one big nope. (laughs) Oh, man, I feel like we're shitting all over the kids, but. That's what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of people have very strong feelings about it, especially people who have attended shows for a very long time. I feel like you guys know what's up and you have some strong opinions about it. Um, Nick, I, 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 97 said I wouldn't attend, which is fair. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, just about like what you can do if you find out a a festival is all ages. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Dream of the Beat said it's cool. Just don't treat us like we're all 16, you know, completely fair point of view. Adam underscore HTX94. Hi, Adam. He said, my personal opinion is that a festival should be 18 plus just because of illegal and minor situations. I completely agree with like with that point of view, because again, the underage drinking and drug use and all that kind of stuff. Like I do agree that maybe it should be 18 plus with like sectioned off 21 plus areas or, you know, whatever. I think the breaking point is just college, right? And not everybody goes to college, but like college age. That's when you're like moving out of your house and you're living somewhere separate and you're like entering adulthood. So I feel like you're separating it a little bit versus like you need a guardian to come to accompany you to a festival. So thank you guys so much for all participating in this. Um, I'm actually going to be testing out some voice recordings in the future. So definitely stay tuned again on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm going to see if I'm going to be able to have you guys actually not call in, but like send in voice memos so we can actually play you guys on here. So again, stay tuned. Definitely email me raveculturecast at gmail.com. We could probably communicate that way too. Like I'll I'll post upcoming episodes when I want your thoughts and your input. And then maybe you guys can like email me your voice memos. It would be awesome to include those clips in here. But anyway, so I'm going to take a quick break here for a minute. Just a reminder, you guys can follow me at Emma Capotis and at Rave Culture Cast on Twitter and Instagram. Also at Hey There Emma. I'll spell that H E Y T H E R E M M A on Snapchat. Again, H E Y T H E R E M M A on Snapchat. When I go to shows, I post more frequently on Snapchat and I just like to like keep you guys informed and sometimes Snapchat just feels more personal to me so I'll post things on there that I don't post anywhere else just because I regularly have it open and I post like heinous photos of my face and more embarrassing stuff so if you guys want to see that kind of behind the scenes stuff definitely check out my Snapchat. All right let's get right back into the episode. So again thank you all for your submissions on Insta stories. Um, I really was excited to hear what you guys had to say about this and like I said some of you guys had some really strong opinions and I don't 
blame where you're all coming from. Like now that we've talked about all this, I'm going to wrap up my final thoughts on this subject and where I stand on this. So for me, I don't think we should move forward with making everything 18 plus. Like I think we can exist as we are and some events are all ages 16 plus and some are 18 plus. Um, I don't have a problem with it in general. I think more festivals that take place during the day that should be all ages and 16 plus because again you can bring your kids to do like games and rides and then you can go home but I think like the insomniac events and like EDC Las Vegas for example that starts at 7 p.m and goes till 5 30 in the morning you're not having a fucking 16 year old there I'm sorry that's ridiculous I don't think that's the time and place for them and even though the slogan is all are welcome here I think even they recognize that there's a maturity level um, and it's it's not the safest, right? So I think it is okay to have an age limit on some of those festivals that go into like the wee hours of the morning. I do think all ages and 16 plus changes the dynamic of a festival. Um, I actually went to Life in Color Miami. God, this was probably, I think it was three years ago now with my best friend Vicky. We bought tickets to that. It was crazy. It was like a whim thing. It was a one day festival, but it was stacked. It was Flosher Domus. It was Jack U. It was Nightmare. We flew to Miami for literally three days just to attend this festival. We got there. And at the time, so three years ago, I was 25. We got there. There were literal kids in braces on the line going in. And we looked at each other and we were like, is this 16 plus? Question mark, question mark. What? We felt it was so young. It was so young. We felt, again, and it's this is personal. Not everyone will feel this way. Some people will go to that and it won't bother them at all. I was like, nope, not for me, not again. I haven't attended a Life in Color show since. I just was like, cool, I outgrew this festival. That's totally fine. It's not for me anymore. So I am personally going to remove myself from this situation. Um, I just think that it changes the dynamic when it's 16 plus or all ages, right? So when it's happening during the day and there's things to do, it's a carnival, it's themed, I think that's okay. I think families can bring their little kids. I love to see that. That's the stuff I'm so here for. I want to bring my kids to festivals one day, but I think it changes the dynamic when people are drinking, people are using drugs. Like it just may not be the right environment for some younger kids. Um, so that's sort of where the problem lies for me. Um, it's more the teenagers and like the younger kids in college even sometimes who can be like a little bit of rowdier again we've all been there I've been there I know what I was like so I've definitely changed and matured and grown up since the years that I first started like raving and going to shows so I can say that so I just think festivals should continue to assess the crowds that attend their shows um, and decide for themselves whether they're going to be 18 plus 21 plus I think like these mixed genre festivals too those tend to be more all ages some of like the EDM festivals uh, skew a little bit older I think a lot of European festivals as well I didn't touch on that too much those skew older like I've heard Tomorrowland um, from several people seemed to be a much older more mature crowd a little bit more laid back and a European vibe is just different I was even just in a festival in Canada and those kids that was 16 plus and that stood out to me because those kids were so respectful I didn't have any issues with anyone in that crowd so again it might depend on the location the time of the day and the type of festival that it is because Ever After was a perfect example of all ages going well probably because they're all Canadians and Canadians are the coolest people ever what's up you guys (laughs) um but again Just to wrap this up, for me, at this point, after attending festivals for 13 years, I have seen enough to know, and Governor's Bowl solidified it for me, that I prefer 18+. plus. Will I still go to all ages? Possibly, because I still want to attend things like Lollapalooza. Like, I've never done that, and I would like to give each festival a chance. But personally, I would choose to avoid them if I can, just because I prefer an older crowd. One solution for you guys out there who like really want to go to a festival and you're like, fuck, it's 16 plus. I really don't want to deal with that where it's all ages. I'm not about that life. One thing that I've been doing recently is buying more and more VIP passes. I know they're extremely expensive and it might be out of your budget, but some of these places do have payment plans, which makes it easier for a lot of people. What's great about a VIP experience is it sort of gives you that separation from the rest of the crowd and these younger kids probably can't afford VIP. So you have separate 
viewing platforms, entrances, bathrooms, bars. You just have that separation. It's not as crowded in those areas. So I think that that could be a really great option for you if you still want to attend an event that's all ages. Maybe look into doing a VIP pass just so you have that separation. And as you get older and you have a bigger budget, I think that that's just eventually where you'll grow into. So you guys, that is pretty much it for this episode. I'm really curious to hear more thoughts on this. So please tweet me, um, DM me, send me emails, raveculturecast at gmail.com and then at Emma Capotis and at raveculturecast on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, If you guys have attended All Ages events or 16 plus events that I didn't mention today, I want to hear your thoughts on them. What was your experience like? Was it good? Was it bad? Like I just mentioned, Ever After for me was a really good experience and a good example of a crowd that was more mature and respectful. And then Governor's Ball was an example of it not going so well. So I'm totally curious to hear your opinions. Again, you guys can go check out my YouTube channel if you are interested um, for more raver content, EDM vlogs. Um, I have a lot of preparation videos coming up for Electric Zoo and for Imagine Music Festival. I also have a ton of um, festival makeup tutorials and try on hauls and all that fun stuff coming up. So yeah, go check it out. It's under my name, Emma Capotis. Next week, I'm going to be having a very special guest on the podcast. I'm finally doing like an interview sort of situation. So I'm really excited. So you guys, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast or followed us, please do so. Please rate and review us on iTunes. It means so much to me um, to see your guys' feedback and to see you guys supporting the podcast. Seriously, I love my podcast fam. The Rave Culture fam is the fucking best. Thank you for listening and for being here and for checking us out every week. Again, tag your girl in your Insta stories. Spread the word. Send it to your friends and your family. Um, Sound off. Let's just keep growing this community because it's seriously the best. You guys fucking rock. Um, And on that note, if you guys know of anyone in the EDM community that has like a really interesting story or just somebody you would like me to interview or you would like me to talk to on this podcast and some of them might be a reach some of them might be people that aren't like total celebrities because I you girl I don't know if I can get that level yet but if there's anyone in the EDM community that you think has a super interesting story again please email me raveculturecast at gmail.com dm me I do want to start ramping up um, my interviews with people and getting you guys on here to tell your stories that's what this is all about I want to have different experiences and opinions on here um, I have a couple people in mind that I'm planning episodes with. And like I said, stay tuned for next week because the first one's coming then. But I do want different perspectives on here. So please hit me up. If there's someone you think is cool that owns like a rave clothing company or is doing something really incredible in the community or anything along those lines, you know, I want to reach out to these people. I want to hear from them. So yeah. Anyway, please let me know about it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll be back next week with a new episode. Have an awesome week, you guys. Bye.